Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we're kind of picking up in our reading, we're picking up uh, the talk with, of Jesus with the 12 that are being commissioned and sent out. And so we're right in the middle of a conversation. It's kind of like walking up to a group of people that are already talking and trying to catch up with what they've been talking about. And again, he's given instructions to the 12. They're not to go into uh, pagan territories or to the Samaritans, but only to the lost sheep of Israel. They're told about what to take and what not to take. He's really warning them that uh, I'm sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. Uh, so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. And uh, he's telling them to beware because there are people that are going to be treacherous toward them. And this, of course, is not just for their current mission, but a foreshadowing of what they're going to face later on when they're full on in terms of being the apostles in the church that are going to take the message after Jesus' passion, death, resurrection, and ascension and spread it to the whole world. And again, so we're picking it up there. In fact, uh, when he's talking about uh, fear no one, he's talking about the enemies that he had just described talks about beforehand brother will hand over brother to death and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death, etc., etc. So there's going to be a great polarization that is going to be uh, a a necessary consequence of the proclamation of the gospel. And so he says, therefore, fear no one. The therefore isn't in the reading, but it's in the original text in the Bible. Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed or secret that will not be known. In other words, God knows it all. He knows who those people are. He knows what they're all about. He knows what they're up to. And so he says, what I say to you in darkness, speak in the light. In other words, what I've said to you privately as I've been teaching you, you're now to take it out and spread it through the light. And um, and he says, you know, don't be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body. And so uh, while we're not to fear anyone, we should have some fear of the Lord. But that's a different kind of fear than fearing these people. Fearing those people is a fear based on terror. Uh, a fear based on being afraid of what can happen to us. Uh, The fear when we're talking about the fear of God is we're talking about having a healthy and uh, uh, just concrete reverence and awe for who God is. That, That we might recognize in him that he is the God of the universe. We don't take him casually. We don't take what he is doing and who he is with a grain of salt, but we fear him because of who he is. He is powerful. You know, there are the, all of these wonderful words, omniscient, omnipresent, 
uh, omnipotent, all of these words talking about all powerful, all knowing, all loving. You know, there's these amazing words that describe God. And so we have to remember that we do need to have a healthy fear or a healthy respect for who God is. Um, many, many years ago, I remember hearing uh, a, a campus minister by the name of Josh McDowell, a really neat guy. And uh, he was talking to a group of college students. And he was talking about uh, the Our Father prayer and a f few other things. And he was talking about this whole thing of the fear of the Lord. And he made this statement. He said, remember that uh, God is our father, but he's not our old man. In other words, yes, he's our father, but we need to treat him with the awe and respect that he should be given as the very God of the universe. And in fact, when you talk about one who um, is uh, that awesome and that amazing, that all-powerful, he said, uh, Jesus said, remember, uh, you know, there are not two sparrows sold for a small coin, yet if one of them falls to the ground, the Father knows it. In other words, even insignificant things like fair sparrows, he knows when they fall to the ground. Uh, he even knows all of the hairs of your head. They're all counted. Uh, I like to say to people, and for some, that's a lot less work than for others. Nonetheless, God knows the hairs, even the hairs of our head. He knows us that completely, that fully. And he says, do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. In other words, you can have a holy fear, but don't be in terror. Don't be afraid of God. Just be in awe of him. And then he goes on to say, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. I'm going to tell him, you're my friend. But if you deny, and this is not just for them, but this is the message they can take as they go to minister to people, is that people need to be consistent and honest in declaring their love for God as they respond positively to the covenant that he's established. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I have a kind of a, a bit of an assignment for the takeaway on this. And I want you to just sit quietly for a few minutes and just think about how God knows you so intimately. And, you know, the sparrows and the hares and those types of things are just, um, just examples. But, for example, uh, that would be more personal. You can sit there and go, Lord, the Lord knows me in spite of these things that I have going on in my life and loves me, that I count more than the sparrows. He knows me when I'm doing these things, these things that I'm doing for him. He sees it all. And I think that that's one of the beautiful, beautiful things that we have here, um, that Jesus is saying that he knows you intimately and completely, both good and bad, but that you matter to him. You count to him. He cares about you, and he desires to do what he can to provide you with the grace and the strength and the relationship with the Holy Trinity that you need to truly be successful in navigating this world. So that's kind of a takeaway. Just think about all of the ways in which God knows you and thank him for being such a loving God. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.